Well, hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to flush out a conventional style or tank style water heater like this electric one here. Uh, you can also do it on the gas tank style water heaters. It's the same process. Uh, now the manufacturer recommends you flush these things out once a year. Uh, they'd like to build up minerals and little crystals and some little rust flakes and stuff and it gets down in the bottom and it reduces the capacity of the water heater. Uh, so they want you to flush them out once a year to keep those volumes and stuff up. Now if you've got a water heater that's 20 something years old and it's working just fine, leave it alone. Don't mess with it because those little crystals and those little particles of rust may be the only thing that's holding that tank together. I've seen that happen where people ask if you can come repair a water heater that's 20 something years old. You go to drain that thing down to replace elements or something in it and when you pressurize it again, it starts leaking like crazy. So uh, just remember that if it's an old, old water heater, I would leave it alone. I wouldn't mess with it. But if your water heater is about five years old and you've never flushed it out, it might be a good idea to do it. So for this job, what you're going to need is a screwdriver. Sometimes there's a little handle down there, uh, but you're going to need a screwdriver and I recommend uh, the six and ones or the nine and ones because it is a bunch of different screwdrivers, nut driver, Phillips head, flat head, all in one and you only have to have the one tool in your toolbox. Uh, and the other thing you're going to need is just a plain old garden hose. Now uh, your garden hose, the length of your garden hose, you only want it to be as long as you need it. It's not a big deal for a flush out like this, but if you're actually draining this thing down, you don't want 200 something feet of hose and you only need to go 30 feet to get out of your house. Now if this water heater is in the garage, like most of them are, you just take the hose, hook it up to what they call the boiler drain at the bottom and run the hose out your garage door and just let the water blow out on your driveway. Now if it's in an attic or something like that, uh, you might have to run the hose down the little staircase or scuttle door or whatever and you can put it into a tub or a sink or something like that. Uh, just remember when you're draining it down, um, it's, it's all gravity. It's not going to have pressure behind it and any kind of resistance in your little hose. You might get little crystals caught in your little boiler drain down there. Uh, so you might have to work that back and forth to crunch some of that stuff up to get it on out. But uh, like I said, this is an easy job and I'm going to show you how to do it. Now on the bottom of every tank style or conventional water heater, whether it's electric or gas, you're going to have a little thing that looks like a spigot down here. Uh, they call it a boiler drain. Uh, a lot of these heaters back in the day were called boilers because they also used them to heat your house and stuff. It's pretty neat. Uh, but not for most residential ones. It's just a water heater. But you're going to take your hose and you're just simply going to screw it onto there. Make sure you got a good washer in that hose or that your washer, your hose washer didn't spill out because you don't want this thing dripping water out and leaking it on the floor. Uh, sometimes this pan can get in the way and you might have to bend it out of the way. This one's plastic, some of them are metal. Uh, but pretty much leave your valves on at the top. Don't turn the water off. You're going to leave it on because uh, you want that pressure. You want to use that pressure. And this is a quarter turn uh, little gate valve, ball valve I mean, and uh, <clears throat> you're just going to turn it. Well, if I can get on there. Uh, I would open it slow at first and then that way your hose isn't flopping around over there. But then open that all the way up. Now this one here is brand new. Uh, so it's not really going to have any trash or anything on the bottom of it. But uh, if it's been in service for a while, you're probably going to see a lot of crystals and uh, uh, some brown water, some rusty water coming out of it. Uh, that's good. That's the stuff you want to get out. Now normally when I do this, I go run down to the end of my hose and I check it out and see if there's anything coming out of it. Uh, but when you're done, let it run for a little bit. Uh, another trick that I do um, is shake this thing around. Give it a good shake stir up that stuff on the bottom, grab it from the top, give it a good shake. Now granted it is full of full of water uh, so it's going to be heavy but you can shake it around and anything on that bottom is going to find its way out that boiler drain. And let it go for a little bit. Like I said you can watch the end of your hose and when all that junk crystals and rusty stuff gets out of there uh, you can come back up here and you just simply turn it off 
and that's all you have to do to flush out one of these conventional water heaters. It's real easy, real simple, uh, can be done in just a few minutes. Thanks a lot.